Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, True Seeker. You're tuned into another exciting episode of the True Seeker podcast. I'm excited to be here. It's my honor and privilege to be here uh, speaking over you guys and bringing some content to the table. So uh, this would not be possible at all without your help. So I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who is supporting on Patreon, patreon.com backslash True Seeker. So for any level of giving per month, we have extra podcasts. We have unreleased music. Most of you guys are listening because you are fans of the music and fans of the information that comes through the music. So there's a lot of new music over there that's unreleased to the general public and only for those who are supporting on Patreon. So I just moved into a place where I'm doing this full time and this is my full time ministry, my, my full time uh, calling. And um, so Anything that you guys can do to help, it goes a very long way, and I'm me and my family are very grateful. So head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker to sign up for any level of giving and get rewards at the same time. I'm excited about this show because a lot of reasons. So we just went live the other night, and I had a, a special guest on. I had Jordan Maxwell on. And reading the comment section, people were going nuts because we have a lot of people who are into spirituality, a lot of people who are Christians who believe in Jesus and have faith in Christ. And listening to Jordan Maxwell speak for an hour and a half, uh, they had a lot of questions and didn't get a lot of answers. And so some of the questions that I brought up to Jordan, he didn't really uh, go into a lot of detail, kind of dodged questions. And so one of the big things I'm and the reason I'm bringing Jordan Maxwell up is one of the big things that um, I kind of cleaned it up at the end. But when Jordan Maxwell got off, uh, w before he got off the phone, he was talking about Satan and he was talking about um, there's nothing you can do against the adversary, the enemy. And 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 uh, he's smarter than you and he's more cunning than you. And I tried to set him up for questions and stuff and let him answer. But he said there was nothing we can do. Right. And that couldn't be anything further from the truth, especially when someone quotes the Bible and someone is, is going into the information and knowledge of the Bible. Uh, spirituality 101 and Jesus 101 um, is about spiritual warfare, about overcoming the enemy. So tonight's show is important because I have my guest Bill Bean on with me tonight, who is a deliverance minister an exorcist, and he specializes in spiritual warfare. So tonight, uh, it may weigh out some of the, the different info that was going back and forth, but 
I think it's good to have your beliefs challenged. Uh, I think it's good because, uh, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in a state of confusion. Many of us get scared when our beliefs get questioned. But I think that that's the only place to know what you truly believe, because nobody can take that from you. And so I've been in places over the years where I'm just kind of rocked back and forth, but it made my foundation even stronger because my foundation was built on Christ, who is the solid rock. It wasn't uh, based upon some theory or somebody else's encounter with God, but upon my encounter with God and my revelation of Jesus Christ. So over the years, it's only gotten even stronger with having my faith tested and checked. So tonight is going to be an awesome night. We're going to get into spirituality, spiritual warfare. If you guys have any stories, the phone lines will be open. Go ahead and call in and we'll take those calls about halfway through. So without further ado, my guest, Bill Bean. What's up, brother? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, my brother. It's great to be back with you. It's been way too long and um, we certainly have a lot to talk about. That's for sure. There's a lot going on in, in the spirit realm right now. And like you said, there's a lot to kind of, to kind of go in on. Um, without just jumping into it um, and getting into all of the goodies, kind of kind of give the people who haven't heard of you before, kind of give them a little background on who you are and, and what you bring to the table. Yeah, well, I'm known as the spiritual warrior, and God has called me uh, not only to be a humble servant, but a fierce warrior for him because I was once a victim. And uh, my family and I were, uh, my family was destroyed, and I was nearly destroyed as well by demonic forces. I've written three books. And in the first book, which is called Dark Force, I talk about this, about the events that took place. And um, I have been to the lowest of lows, and I have suffered greatly, and my family suffered as well. So um, I travel all over the country. Uh, God has worked through me to help people from all over America and even many different parts of the world. So God has worked through me to have uh, helped thousands of people, literally, uh, to become free from demonic strongholds and oppression and sometimes possession. And so um, I have seen and experienced things that most people could not uh, imagine in their wildest dreams or wildest imaginations. And so... Um, by the calling and power and anointing from God, I'm the guy running into the burning building when everybody else is running out. So um, <laughs> this requires me to be in total faith, strength, and courage in what I call warrior mode uh, 24-7. I refuse to lose, and I can't let down for one second because I have to be somebody to somebody each and every day mm -hmm. of my life. So... Um, and you have been on your show several times before, and I've, I've said it then, and I'll say it again now. Uh, the journey really began um, probably not long after coming into this world, Derek. Uh, I think God had a plan and a purpose for me before I ever came into the world. And I also, through photographic evidence, uh, discovered photographs that were taken of me at the age of two and then again at the age of three to where some anomalous phenomena was taking place in the photographs and, and, you know, there were other types of beings in the photo with me. And for anyone who would like to see some of those photos, please uh, visit billbean.net and click on the uh, photo gallery there and you'll see some very bizarre photos that I've either taken over the years or that have been taken of me. And, um, you know, I say it all began when my family and I moved into a three-bedroom ranch-style home located in uh, an area called Lumberning, Maryland, uh, a community called Arendelle. But again, it really goes much, much further back. And then I found out after writing the first book, Dark Force, that my mother had many supernatural experiences and her siblings as well in their childhood. And it goes even further back than that. I found out that there were some family members many, many, many years ago who actually conjured these demonic spirits and they came upon the family and caused a, a great amount of destruction throughout the years. And so in moving uh, into that house, which I was four years old at the time that we uh, moved in there, I knew from the very beginning at the age of four that something was wrong. My sister was 13 at the time. And she, too, had that uh, 
terrible, uneasy feeling. And I recall us both standing out there uh, in front of the house, just uh, looking and, and knowing that something was very, very wrong. So the house was located at the bottom of a downhill cul-de-sac, and it was semi-dilapidated. My dad, uh, William Sr., who was a master carpenter, saw it as a restoration project, and he did just that. He restored it, did a great bit of uh, work to it, and um, made it look uh, very nice. And um, the house was equally as ominous and foreboding on the inside, Derek. It had uh, dark brown paneling on the walls, a very heavy vibe and feeling to it when you went into the house and you would enter into the front door uh, into the living room area and again just imagine and there are some photographs of the interior of the house on the billbean.net website and you could see it for yourself that um, you know this this paneling was just dark brown almost black in color so even on the brightest of uh, sunny days it was still um dim, dimly lit in the house. And and so you would uh, enter into the living room, make a right down a long hallway, which had a um, tile floor, a hard tile, uh, was on the floor and oftentimes would be laying in bed middle of the night hearing these footsteps coming down the hallway. It was like hard soled shoes or boots or something like that. It would reverberate off of the paneling, um, you know, on the walls in the hallway. And my mom was the first to have an experience not long after moving in. And it took place in the living room while she was unpacking and organizing. My dad uh, had taken us, and I have uh, an older sister and a younger brother, uh, Patty and Bobby, and he had taken us with him for the day to uh, my grandparents, his parents' house, to allow my mother to unpack and organize in what they thought would be peace without us being under her feet. And it was during the course of this that my mom felt the presence come into the room. And in her mind, she thought it was my dad sneaking back in to play a joke on her to try and scare her. And at one point, she spun around, fully anticipating on seeing him. And to her shock, you know, nothing was there. So she was... uh, She was taken aback by it. She was unnerved. She was perplexed. All these things. Um, But eventually able to go back to what she was doing. And it wasn't long after that that um, my sister's bedroom door slammed shut by itself. And that was enough to make her go outside and wait until we uh, returned. So that's where it began, and then it gradually escalated into more of these noises and doors slamming and feelings of presence. It escalated into uh, violent physical attacks on us from these demonic entities that uh, greatly contributed to the destruction of my family. And I have to tell you, you know, looking back on all of this, you know, are there things that I wish that I could change? Um, Certainly knowing what I know now, uh, if I could go back in time, you better believe it would have been a different story. Um, but I can't change them. These things happen. And so now I say that um, I couldn't be here had I not been there. So it was a necessary part of the journey. We all have a journey in life that sometimes those with the greater calling suffer the most. And so um, I really believe that uh, some of it was necessary in helping mm-hmm. to shape me into who I am now as a spiritual warrior helping other people. <clears throat> yeah. Let, let me ask you this, because just kind of to, to actually piggyback off of that notion, and maybe this is going to be getting too deep on some um, theology and things like that, but one of the the thing that, things that I wrestle with, because I, I, I believe both sides of this coin, but so we understand that mm-hmm. like God leads us down certain paths and... Um, we have these life changing experiences. Obviously, if you wouldn't have went through that stuff at an early age, you wouldn't have this almost righteous anger in you for the other side or to kind of combat the other side. Right. It's, it's there for a reason because you, because you experienced that stuff. 
Um, yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. It's a fury. Exactly. And uh, I take these things very, very personally because of what happened. And uh, there is a true fury and a real fire burning there because of what took place. So, okay, so God allowing that to happen, setting it up, however we want to call it. Okay, so we have this this thing because we know that trials and tribulations come into our lives to build character. And there's reasons, I think, that we go through seasons. And, and I, I honestly feel like mm-hmm. they're all orchestrated by God. I think I feel like God is sovereign and yeah. everything is, is orchestrated by him. You know, the good and the bad. There's that sense there. Okay, we're in a season. I agree. We're, He's in know, control of everything. <laughs> the devil's a created being. Mm-hmm, exactly. I agree. And, and so... So how do we look at it when these trials and tribulations are ordered by God because he has something to teach us and there's something in it to learn and we're going to keep taking those tests over and over again until we learn it versus pray over me, cast these wicked spirits off of me and help me get out of the season. Where does that kind of uh, tie in together? It's almost like we want to be just like automatically, okay, pray over me, pray the blessing, pull me out of my affliction versus I have to be here to learn what God is teaching me. You know what I'm saying? Boy, there's a fine line to everything in life, and that is a fine line. So we have to stay in the center there on that fine line. And uh, every season and every chapter and everything in life is for a reason. And so that said, God also wants us, and I am convinced of this beyond a shadow of a doubt because my life drastically changed when I started thinking differently and started, you know, certainly when I made God first in my life and then I became fierce Mm -hmm. and then God really had a great favor and anointing on me. So that is a message that I give to people as well. So God can work through me all day long to cast demons out of people. However, there has to be a mindset change. So when people who are under this type of attack and affliction and this type of uh, attachment or oppression or possession. Uh, They are in the fear-based, trauma-based way of thinking. They are victims. Hey, I was a victim too, and my family was also, so I understand it. Um, But you then have that mindset of living in that fear-based, trauma-based way, and you expect these things to happen, and then you accept them into your life to happen. And so then, um, life is just unbearable, but for us, it was unbearable, but acceptable in the sense that we anticipated and expected those things, and we became very robotic, very Mm -hmm. zombie-like in the sense that, uh, you know, now you are just existing, you are just surviving, you are literally trying to get through one day to the next, and so... I've often said, Derek, that people, human beings, operate on frequency and vibration. So when our frequency and vibration is on high, life is generally good. Things are positive, and you are moving forward. And to me, that's what life is all about. So when we're really making God first and we're walking in that warrior mode, faith, strength, and courage, we are moving forward. Um, But when a person is on low, and again, I've been there, so I understand it, uh, everything sucks. Life sucks. It's like the black cloud over somebody's head. Uh, Nothing ever goes right. There's always a problem, a drama, a situation, and never an answer or a solution. So I say to people, look, uh, I'm every bit as much a counselor and a life coach as I am a deliverance minister because... Sometimes it's not that deep. You have to plant these seeds with people. (laughs) Yeah. Right, exactly. But you you have to reach these people to change the mindset and say, look, now we're going to get busy living. We are going to get busy winning. And the next time the devil tries to come into our life, we're going to kick him in the teeth Mm -hmm. out. And how can we do this? By the power of God. Yeah. I don't do these things on my own accord. This is the power of God that works through me to do these things. I could not do these things without the power of God working through me. There is no way. So I praise God for that. So I try to preach this and plant these seeds with others that, hey, when we get into this warrior mode, God will have honor and favor on us just like he did with David. Mm -hmm. Because David was a man after his own heart because of his faith, strength, and courage. 
and God will honor that. So that's what it's all about for me, and that is the main message that I preach, that I want people to stop being victims, and I want them to be victors. Yes. When we're talking about busting up Satan's kingdom, when we're talking about people who have evil spirits or unclean spirits on them, around them, and in them, and we go through and we rid people of that stuff we whatever they have going on in their life whether they need counseling whether they have ungodly beliefs that is given the right for these entities to be here well we counsel people out of that or pray people through it um there be, there comes a target on your back especially uh, someone who has touched many as many souls as you have right so and you've actually been doing this for a very long time now and when yeah. we, whenever we hear the word exorcist, a lot of people think of Catholicism, right? When we hear that word, um, yeah. The, yeah. some of the main leading exorcists say that you're only good for a few years in deliverance ministry. And I think that's an ungodly belief right there. I think that's just anticipating your defeat. Um, talk a little bit about that, about how you're able to do it. Like you said, it was through the strength of God, but not how... He, he brings you to it, through it, but he sustains you to keep moving on in those directions to fight the enemy. You are absolutely correct. And without God, again, I could not do what I do, and I praise him for it. There are times, uh, Derek, that it was getting so crazy, and I'm thankful now this is the first time in probably the last six months that I've had a little bit of rest. I've been at home now uh, for a week and a half. And uh, it's great to be able to recharge. I've done some things locally and, and help people with uh, uh, phone sessions, but just not having to travel uh, for this little bit of time has really re-energized me and reinvigorated me because life was becoming a blur. When you're traveling that much, you're constantly getting on and off of airplanes and in and out of airports and hotel rooms. There are days that I would wake up in hotels and say, wait a minute, where am I at right now? What <laughs> city am I in? Yeah. I mean, that's how crazy it was getting. But again, through it all, the power of God was helping me to, so if I would wake up and have that confusion in the morning, by the time I get to the client or clients or family or whatever it may be, I am on my game. I am sharp. I'm strong. I'm right where I need to be. And that is the power of God mm -hmm. that is just coming into me and re-energizing me and strengthening me and sharpening my mind and my spirit as well, because I have to have that spiritual discernment when I'm involved in these things. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing how God works in that way. So I heard you say something about uh, this Jordan Maxwell. I've never met this man. I've uh, seen a couple videos on him, and uh, I'm sure he's a very educated man. However, uh, boy, would I ever like to have a debate with him sometime in the future um, about uh, not having any power against the enemy and all that, which is absolute garbage. And, and look, I'm not going to put the man down. I've never met him. But I could tell you this from personal experience and from God working through me all these times to help people that we do have great power. It is the power of God that works through us to defeat the enemy, to really kick the enemy out of our lives. You know, I have suffered um, just so much in my life, and my life could have turned out so vastly different. I really, I've been in many life-threatening situations, and I shouldn't even be here on this earth, but the power of God, he was right there with me, keeping me alive and keeping me for this present time right now. So there is no doubt in my mind, based on my experiences alone, that our God is real. Our God does love us. Our God is with us and he is for us, mm -hmm. especially when we call on him. And our God makes the impossible possible. So the key to defeating the devil and his minions is to make God first, keep him first, have yeah. Christ in your heart, have Christ guiding you, and be fierce. Be in that warrior mode. Be in that faith, strength, and courage to where you don't fear anyone or anything. 
then there's nothing to the devil to feed on because fear is the number one tool for the enemy. He loves it and he feeds off of it. And furthermore, by our fears, that lowers our frequency and vibration right down into the realm where he is and his minions. And that's right where he wants us to be because when he gets us down into those lower realms, then he can drag us back. So when we're with God, we're on high, we're moving forward. The enemy wants us on low, and so it can drag us backward. Are you still um, attacked like you were when you first started? Because I know like, a lot of what I do and a lot of what I talk about is when I first started and was having all of these demonic encounters. But I've noticed, like you're saying, of this different level of vibration that we're walking in on a daily basis and our hearts are set on the things above. Our minds are continually set upon him. We only keep good things, you know, on our, on our hearts and in our minds. And we only talk about good stuff. You know, we don't dwell upon the negativity and stuff. It seems like a lot of that stuff just disappears for me now. So it's not like the attacks are there or like waking up with a demon in your room or whatever that case is. And I don't see much of that anymore, even though we are still on the offensive with the enemy and still helping people. I don't feel like there's like a, like a rebuttal in that case. Maybe there's other attacks that come that are a little bit more well-crafted. Not that the, uh, the demons appearing outside in the night is, is what's going to scare you or, or, or confront you. It's something maybe a little bit more traumatic or deeper fears that are embedded. So are you still having like personal attacks to this day that are still like these bodily manifestations or is that stuff that's kind of, kind of gone now that you know who you are and you're walking in higher levels of vibration on angelic levels, essentially. Yeah, totally gone, brother. And I praise God for it. I would never, ever have that again Amen. because if something were to manifest before me right now, I would literally leap out of my chair and attack it. How yeah. can I do this? By the power of God that works through me. So I fear not, for I know that God is with me. And when we are in that type of thinking, in that what I call that warrior mode, when we're in that, those demons fear us because they're not fearing us. They're fearing the power of God that is within yeah. us. And there's nothing that they can do. It neutralizes them. They have nothing to feed off of at all, and they have to flee and depart. Yep. It's as simple as that. It and is. And I refuse to lose, so I won't have any of that. I'll never be a victim again, ever. And that's what I, again, try to preach to other people, say, hey, get into this this really um, aggressive mindset where it's an intense faith. It really is. I mean, this is how I am every day. Um, this is intense faith and knowing what God has done for me, knowing the favor that God has over me, and knowing that our God loves us so much that he makes the impossible possible. And so when he's with us, and if God is with us and for us, then who can be against us? Exactly. Nobody. That's a good so we have to stay in that mindset. That's true. That's true. That's truth. And I'm glad you quoted that because the scripture says that his word is truth. Right. And everybody's out there looking for truth. Yeah. I mean, even the name of this podcast, Truth Seeker Podcast, he is truth. His word is truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So I think that that's how we should judge this stuff, whether it's Jordan Maxwell. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I love Jordan. I'm, I'm, I'm He's welcome back on maybe in the future. I don't know. We'll see. But I love him. But. What is the message that's coming across? Is it truth that's making you free? And I think that's how we can judge if it's, are you, are you more bound up by fear, hysteria, high blood pressure after you hear this stuff? I'm telling you, there, there's been, and I, I'm using Jordan Maxwell as an example. It's nothing about him. There are many, there are many Jordan Maxwells out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm using him as yeah, an example. Totally so we, we've had him on the show even in, in years past where, like you can feel the air being sucked, the life being sucked out of the atmosphere while they're speaking. And I, and it's a spiritual experience while they're speaking and it's not good. It's, I had to cut them yeah. off and kick him off my show the most polite way I could and then try to bring some truth to what was happening. So what is the message? What is the truth? That's, is it making you free or is it making you more bound up and having living in fear or are you living in righteousness and victory? And that's why it's so awesome when you say that just trust in God 
And I know it sounds easy. People want this this really complicated stuff that we can bottle and sell, but it is so easy. When I was knee deep in witchcraft and occultism and I had demons speaking to me and I was going crazy, losing my mind. The one scripture that was given to me that helped me, it's my favorite scripture when I sign autographs and sign CDs and, and merch and things like that. I signed this scripture, James 4, 7. Therefore, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, yep. and he will flee. Yep. And that, that for me is exactly a formula. Right. I think that's a formula. If one we, if like a checklist. Well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you 100%, brother, and it's the truth. And that's that's the thing. People... Even though they may be in a bad place in their life, they still have discernment to know and feel yeah. the truth. Because, again, we're talking frequency and vibration. Exactly. And so when we're speaking these words, which are absolutely 100% true, Light. this mm-hmm. goes, this resonates. Yeah, it resonates with these people, and they can feel it, and, and it is all goodness because it is of God. The truth yeah. is with God, and the truth is God. And so uh, when somebody else is speaking things that are not true, uh, and it is a dark type of message, people can also feel that. And it was a good analogy, uh, which you used about like the air being sucked out of the room and yeah. stuff like that. People could feel that kind of negativity. And um, all I could say now is that we are truly living in a time like no other. And it is more important now than ever before to come back to God, renew your everlasting covenant with Yahweh, make his son, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Christos, the Savior, Yahweh saves through him, bring him in, accept him, come back to God in this way and allow God to guide your life and to have this covering over you because the times that we are in and the times that are coming, which are very soon, and look, I'm not about to say I know this and know that, and God told me when the end is coming and all that would mm-hmm. be a lie. That's not true. But I'm basing this on the things that are happening, happening right now currently in our world and yeah. the things that are right around the corner. Um, we need to be in that everlasting covenant with our God. And we need to be under his mighty shadow and under his covering and covered by the blood of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, because that is the only way we are going to get through these things. I'm firmly convinced Mm -hmm. that God will protect, he will protect us, he will save us from this great, terrible day that's coming. But woe to those, and they know who they are, that are doing all this wickedness and have sold out to the enemy. And some of these people are in the churches that have sold out to the devil. Mm -hmm. And they're telling people now, they're telling their congregations that it's okay, that if you take the mark of the beast, you can still be redeemed. There are actually pastors telling congregations this now. Um, This is a lie from the pits of hell. And the way that the mark of the beast is going to come is through these chips. So you just saw the story about the the uh, that company that they all just got chipped and they had a party and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, this this is what's going to happen, and it's already started. But what is right around the corner? Most people they're not seeing it. Okay, there's a device called CERN. Are you aware of yeah. that device, Derek? Yes. Okay. All right. There are. The things existing now that work in concert and, con- and in conjunction with this CERN device, and they are E-Wave quantum computers. There are supposedly only three of these in existence right now. Um, I'm sure there are more than that, and more are coming. These things are like living organisms. Have you heard of these, Derek? Yes, I have. Yeah, they're like living organisms. Supposedly they have, according to this guy, Jordy Rose, um, who's the uh, marketer for these things, uh, supposedly they have human comparable to human heartbeats, and um, they can solve problems at light speed, and uh, just they are like nothing we have ever 
seen or fathomed in our wildest dreams. And so this technology is here now. What they are doing, and this is a common theme going throughout now when you really pay attention to the bigger picture of what's happening here. These devices are working in conjunction with the CERN device, and they are opening doorways and portals to other worlds um, and loosing more and more demons on the earth. This is why I'm so busy. As a deliverance minister, nonstop traveling to people because so many people are being affected by this. More and more of these demons are coming onto the earth. They're coming up from underneath. Um, they are coming through these portals because of this CERN device and these D-Wave computers. And as crazy as this may sound, and I grant you it does sound crazy, and it's going to sound even crazier with what I'm going to say next, but don't take my word for it. And you people listening, don't take my word for it. Do the research for yourself. Pray about it first and ask God if what I'm saying is true. And secondly, start to dig into this and do the research. So these D-Wave quantum computers working in conjunction with this CERN device are literally able to now turn back time. And how can I say this? Because if you were to check your King James Bibles right now, you would be astounded. Now, what I'm about to say is not fear-based, trauma-based. I'm not saying this to put people in fear. I'm saying this to empower people because knowledge is power. So I'm saying this not to scare you. I'm saying this to wake you up. It is very important for you to know what is going on right now. And it is super important to make your covenant with God ASAP. So, Derek, I don't know if you are aware of this. I was made aware of this nearly a year ago by uh, a friend of mine who I had, uh, had a Skype session with, and I performed a deliverance for her. She lives in Scotland um, via Skype, and she sent me this information. And at first, I didn't believe it. You know, I, she asked me if I was aware of this, and um, and I thanked Sophia for sending this information to me, but at first I was ready to delete it because I'm very busy. And even when I'm home, I have a million messages to answer all the time. People are always calling me or texting me, texting me or emailing me. So I'm always playing catch up. But anyway, I look at this message. It's a video and, um, it's talking about these changes. And, and I thought, you know, this Mandela effect stuff. And mm -hmm. I thought, I don't have time for this. <laughs> I am going to delete this right now. And I started to delete it, and God stopped me right in my spirit. God stopped me and and put that urging on me to watch this video. And I watched it, and I thought, okay, I'm going to disprove this right now. I have four King James Bibles. I have a Holland Study Bible on my desk. I have uh, a bookcase full of other Bibles. One of my King James Bibles is 157 years old. It was given to me by my dear friend, Scott Moreau. Uh, I have it in the top of my office in the closet. Uh, the Bible that travels with me all over the country is 20 years old. So I get them all out, and I lay them across the desk, and I'm flipping them open. And I started with the Isaiah 11.6. Derek, can you tell me what Isaiah 11.6 is? It's one of the most popular scriptures out of the Bible. There are... <laughs> paintings and statues and depictions of it all over the world. Uh, Elvis sang about it and other people. And um, it's a oh, scripture wow. where it talks wow, about. Wow, 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 lion, wow. Yeah, I'm lion, looking at it now. I've never heard this. I got chills yeah. looking at this. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that scripture is the lion shall lay down with the lamb. Well, not anymore. Now it says the wolf. Dang. The lion is Jesus, the Lion of Judah. The Lamb is the Lamb of God, Jesus. The wolf is the devil, oh the wolf God. in sheep's clothing. That's crazy. Oh, it gets better than this. And I created a website for anybody who really wants to take a look at this. Dang. And I assure you, what I'm saying is 100% true. Hmm. Um, the website is www.beanbiblechanges.com. Punch that up and be ready. Uh, and, and so... 
here's the best explanation for this. God is allowing this to happen because this is part of the great deception. This is the ultimate test of faith. It is upon us now. So Amos 8, verses 11 and 12 says this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east and shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what is happening right now. So there are hundreds and literally, seriously, there are hundreds of scripture changes and alterations that are taking place. They started with the King James Bible. And this has been going on for over a year now. And they're going to other Bibles now. Um, and so I have to thank uh, Kat from extolyeshua.com. She has a, a website, a YouTube channel, and she has, uh, I think she has, a, it's, she's either doing it herself or she has a team of people that have helped her with combing the Bible on a daily basis. And, and this lady is to be commended. She has found so many changes uh, in the Bible. And if you visit DeanBibleChanges.com, you could click on three different files, a file that I have and two files that she has compiled of these changes. And just be sitting down, that's all I could say, because when I saw these changes for myself, I nearly fell. I nearly... I just, I nearly dropped. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe that I looked in my Bible that I've had in my possession, four of them, and one is 157 years old. And I looked in there, and it was changed. And I thought, dear God, what is this? I can't, Man, I this couldn't is fathom it. Crazy, because I'm, I'm looking here now on some older websites, and people are quoting that scripture, and they're, they're, they're quoting it wrong. And they're quoting it with the yeah. uh, with the uh, the lion and the uh, lamb. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, so now we have words in there like matrix, mm -hmm. bank, yeah. bottles, butler, unicorn, naughty, gay, gorgeous stuff, couch, pisseth, space, flesh hooks, Jupiter, suburbs, highways, tires, mufflers, ovens, ranges, pots, uh, dwarfs. Uh, the dwarfs have, are in there? I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> yes. And we have a bonix in there now. Oh, wow. We be. We be. Oh, wow. We be of Abraham's seed. Yeah, I think I remember that. <laughs> so, so, if you visit, you know, beanbiblechanges.com, they're all here. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. That's the way it always was. It's not that way anymore. And that is Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. And now it says, Our Father which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hmm. hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. Huh. It doesn't say on earth anymore, it says in earth. So if you will, for those that are listening in, and if you don't have a Bible, go to BibleGateway.com, punch it up, BibleGateway.com, and punch in Matthew 6, uh, and you'll see, go down verses 9 through 13, and you'll see exactly what I'm saying. So now, uh, it doesn't say our Father who art in heaven. It says our Father which art in heaven. And it says, instead of saying on earth, it says in earth. And mm -hmm. instead of saying trespass and trespasses, it says debts and debtors. It's very, very interesting, man. I, I have definitely looked into the Mandala effect, but never on the Christian end, never that it was being done in the Bible as well. That's so interesting. That's crazy. Another crazy one, brother. This is Genesis 21, verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water. And he, a bottle of water. Uh, let me tell you something. For those who don't know, the word bottles was never in the Bible. It was skin. So water and wine were in skins, not bottles. Bottles is a 14th century word. It was never in the Holy Scriptures, ever. 
in the King James Bible, and it's there now. So Abraham rose up early one morning and took bread and a bottle of water, and he gave it on to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. How would you put a bottle of water on somebody's shoulder? You would put a skin of water on somebody's shoulder, but not a bottle. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is that not preposterous or what? Yeah, that's insane, man. I'm sure there's a lot more, too. That's Oh, Derek, I could go on and on and on. I mean, Genesis 40, verse 1 says, and it came to pass after these things. Now, the word was always cup-bearer. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass after these things that the cup-bearer, that's what it should have said, and that's what it always said. But now it says that the butler, the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker, the butler. Oh, wow. So now we have butlers back in Genesis. That's insane. So many things. It goes changes. on and on and on. And, and um, words that don't even exist in the English language, like crookback. C-R-O-O-K-B-A-C-K-T. That word, if you punch it up on Webster Online, that is not a word in the English language. But yet there it is in Leviticus 21, verse 20. Or back. Now, a crookback would be another word for a hunchback, yeah. but not a crook back, not with a T. That word does not exist, and there it is in Leviticus 21, verse 20. It says, or crook back, or a dwarf. A dwarf. Hmm. <laughs> so, so let me hit you with two more that are going to really flatten you here, okay? So we know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that a man does not reproduce. A man can't get pregnant. A man doesn't have breasts that would uh, that a baby could suck on for milk. None of these things. Now we know this is true. Correct. Correct. Okay. Let me hit you with uh, Numbers eleven verse twelve, and it used to say nursing woman. And now it says, have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father, beareth the sucking child. A nursing father. He used to say nursing woman. Huh. There's a lot of so people going Job, crazy over that one, I bet you. They should be going crazy. And then Job 21, verse 24 says, and he used to say, his body is well fed, and his bones are moistened with marrow. That's what it always said. Now it says, his breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. Mm -hmm. His breasts are full of milk. That's wild. And so, now I want you to think about this also. And let me say this now. I love all people, and I have nothing against anybody, but I am a truth seeker, and I seek the truth. So I know the truth, so I can speak the truth, so I can teach the truth. And part of that truth is that over the last eight years in our country, two of the main agendas were the homosexual agenda and the transgender agenda. Mm -hmm. And again, look, I've helped many homosexuals. I don't have anything against anybody. I don't condone or endorse it at all, but I love everybody and we're all guilty of something. So that said, um, with those two agendas firmly in place and and what we see happening, certainly with the transgender thing now, let me take you to Luke 1734 and 1735. Now, Jesus says, I tell you in that night, and it used to say in that night, a man and a woman in one bed. It said man and a woman. God says, I tell you in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. Two men. Two men in one bed. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. Now it says two men. So the next verse, Luke seventeen thirty-five, it always used to say, and it always said, there would be two women grinding grain together at the mill. One would be taken and one would be left. Now it says, two women <laughs> shall be grinding together. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Bill, this is too much, man. I wouldn't expect... 
I wasn't ready for this tonight, Bill. Oh my God. Hey, the <laughs> truth is the truth, and there's no substitute for it. And this, Man. again, is part of what's going on. And I'm not saying this to scare anybody. I'm saying this to wake people up and to empower people yeah. and to urge them to come to God right now. And if you haven't made your covenant with God and accepted Christ, I urge you to do it right now. And get on your knees and ask God to forgive you for anything and everything that you've ever done, just like I've been on my knees asking him to forgive me. Amen. And God loves us in spite of ourselves. And if we will make him first, I guarantee you, he will bless you and he will protect you and have favor on you. Amen. And you won't have to worry about these things that are upon us and these things that are coming. So the end game of this whole thing, and I'm going to say one more scripture, and then I'm going to tell you the end game. So, in Revelation 1, verse 13, Jesus was always described as a commanding officer that had a gold sash across his chest. you remember that? Yeah. Eric? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now it says, and this keeps right up with the theme that I'm saying here, in the midst, and this is Revelation 1, verse 13, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, closed with a garment, down to the foot, and a girt about the paps. That means bra across the breast with a golden girdle. So now they're describing Jesus as a transsexual. A girt about the paps is a bra across the breast with a golden girdle. It used to say gold sash across his chest. Wow. So here's where it all leads to. It's leading to the end game. Yeah. And the end game is that they are going to say very soon, Due to these D-Wave quantum computers, they are so magnificent, they can do anything. They're the greatest things ever. And they're going to say this. They're going to say that we have come up with the greatest technological discovery in the history of mankind, produced by these D-Wave quantum computers. If you will take this chip, and they will insert this chip into the right hand with this long needle. And you won't be able to get it out, by the way. Once they put it under there, they're putting it in a place you're not going to be able to, you wouldn't be able to cut it out. So anyway, um, they are going to say that if the people will accept the chip, they will become immortal. It will be the merging of man and machine. They'll never die. They will never be sick again. And they will be part of the D-Wave quantum computer, and they will be like gods. And people are going to fall for this, Derek. They're going to line up in the millions to take this. And over my dead body, will mm -hmm. I ever take it? Or my wife? Um, never. And so what I'm saying is that this is right around the corner. God has not told me this. I see it. Yeah. Exactly. And it doesn't take, so all, it doesn't take a rocket God scientist at all. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what I'm urging people to do, and for those out there listening, you don't have to believe a word that I've said here, but I urge you to do the research, pray first, and then ask God to guide you to uh, ask him, number one, if I'm being truthful, number two, ask him to guide you to the research so you can see it for yourself. And that way you can be wise and have that spiritual discernment and then be strong and put on that armor of God. And the way to put that armor of God on is to, number one, make him first, accept his son, Yahshua, Jesus the Christ, and then walk in warrior mode, faith, strength, and courage. And if you can do these things, you won't have to worry about anything, no matter what happens. Amen. That's 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 what uh we're supposed to do man that's the um the countermeasure to the to the darkness and to the evil and that's how we know we're, we we are to be sealed and, and to be protected no matter what's going on not any fear not any doubt not any unbelief but just trust and and faith and thrive in the midst of 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 persecution and and thrive in the midst of what everybody's going like what whatever's going on people are 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 confused they don't know what to believe and what to trust and it's getting it's getting crazy, and I, I don't want to I don't want to harp on it too much, and I, I know you don't want to either, but we can definitely see how you remember in the church, man. Let's say 15 years ago, everybody was talking about this coming persecution that was going to bring about revival. 
this coming persecution, this coming change that would come to the church and coming persecution, we're there. We're there. For mm-hmm. you for you to stand you up and, and, and if for you to stand up in a, a, a group of peers on a social level and say that you believe in the gospel and the gospel changed your life and, and, and you you're saved, you're a believer, you're gonna be laughed at and you're gonna be ridiculed. You know what I'm saying? And so to see that and no then all of these different agendas out here and it's like it is it's insane, man. We got to we got to stand up for truth and and be the people that God has called us to be and 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 understand what that is, man. The genderless aliens, you know, all of these things people are becoming out there um it's all part of it. It's, a, it's all tied in together. Yeah. Yeah, and the next time I come back on, maybe we can dig into that as well, because it's all part of it. Everything is tied together. And I'll say, Joshua one nine right now, have I not have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither uh, be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Wherever thou, wherever thou go, uh, God is there. He is with us. So we don't have to worry about anything. In Isaiah 41.10, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I believe that. I live that every day. Psalm 91 is my favorite. Um, I I believe that. I live by that. And other people should as well. So God gives us blessed assurance. And if you take these words from God to heart, then you're not going to fear anything. And you'll be ready for these things that come. And how can we be ready? Because, again, if God is with us and for us, then nothing is going to stand against us. Amen. Bill, you got time for a phone call? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we're going to the phone lines. Phone lines are open now. If you guys want to call in and ask a question or have a story that you would like to share, go ahead and do that. The number is scrolling across the top of the platform. And as well, it's in the description. So we're going to Northwestern Arkansas. Who are we speaking with? Hey, Truth. Hey, Bill. This is Hunter. Can y'all hear me all right? Hi, Hunter. Yeah, I can hear you. You got a question or a comment? Uh, Yeah. Big old question. And this is one that's been... uh, You you saw me post on this, Truth Seeker, and so I'm just going to try to make it short and sweet real quick. Because I tried to ask Jordan about this, and he just kind of went off on my question, so I'm going to try to reiterate it a little <laughs> well, bit. It's, probably for, it's so, probably for good reason, though, that you didn't ask Jordan. <laughs> okay, so it starts off with, um, I've been having a lot of uh, moments with synchronicity in my life, big and small, but either way, it's been affecting me big time one way or another. One of those moments of synchronicity was, I think in one of your truths, in one of your podcast truths, uh, you or someone mentioned the dream state. And it brought back to my memory a dream I had when I was about 18, 19. And in this dream, I was sitting in the living room of my parents' house. And all of a sudden, this completely silver beam just appears out of nowhere by the front door. And the front door wasn't open, so it phased in, obviously, somehow. I remember it picked me up, kind of like carrying me under its arm, and all of a sudden, I'm outside across from the house, and I'm surrounded by a group of other people. And this being had a remarkable speed because it was, it was in a running stand right before we appeared outside. So it's the being of remarkable speed. And every one of the group I recognized in one way or another. And when I went, when, when I got, when I stood there, I'm looking at the being. Again, it's completely silver, but it's like a mirror. I could clearly see my reflection off the being's body. It had no facial features, no like special body functions, and no genitalia whatsoever. The only thing that kind of discerned it was it had human-like hands, human-like feet, but again, completely silver, and absolutely nothing but hands and feet. And I remember um, there were three of them, and they were all circling around us, kind of like watching us. And right before the dream ended, I remember someone saying, we have been chosen. And I posted this in a the pay the group and someone had originally said it was probably angels because they didn't really appear as being the light as apparently some demons do, which I was not aware of. So kind of just, what do you all think? Certainly sounds like it. It certainly sounds like it's possible. And God does have callings for,
for us. And, and as I stated earlier in the show, those with the greater callings in life suffer the most. So uh, there there will be periods of adversity if you haven't already had that. Um, there will be trials and tribulations, and most people go through trials and tribulations in life. But when people are called the greater callings, those trials and tribulations are amplified and magnified greatly. Um, so it very well could have been something from God's angelic realm. I mean, Psalm 68, 17 says the chariots of God are 20,000, and that's a whole other topic we'll get another time. But I firmly believe that for whatever reasons, our God Yahweh, who is the creator of all things, um, is certainly, for whatever reasons, either he uses or has the heavenly host use some of these flying vehicles. And I believe that Satan and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven in those flying craft. And I think they came down here and took human women and produced a hybrid offspring of giants called the Nephilim um, that ended up um, just wreaking havoc on the earth. And this is why God caused a great flood. But I do believe that some of those uh, things escaped the planet to Mars. And as crazy it's, as that sounds, uh, there are statues and monuments and sphinxes and pyramids and everything else on Mars. And I think that some of them escaped and, and went there. And when things calmed down here, they came back. But this ties in with those Bigfoot creatures as well, because in the uh, Book of Enoch, it talks about these giants, these Nephilim, having unnatural sex acts with the beasts of the field. And that was with bears and apes and such. And this would explain the Bigfoot creatures. And so everything is very much tied in. So what we, you know, call alien uh, phenomena, um, it, it is all tied together. So, yes, God does have the angelic realm, and I do believe that some operate those craft. I believe that he created life elsewhere out there. It's beyond my understanding, but I absolutely believe in the vastness of everything he did. And, and some of those uh, beings may be coming to our planet in those vehicles. I believe that our government has uh, control of some of those vehicles, back engineering them and operating them. And I believe the devil and his minions also have and operate those types of UFO crafts. So uh, it all ties in together. But based on what you've said, I certainly can believe that it was a divine angelic experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I pray that God has had this blessing and favor and will continue have the, to have that blessing and favor over you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, it was just something that happened on me. Because at first I was thinking like it happened aliens, but I remember I never saw a ship. There was no ship in sight. And I remember I was trying to rack my brain through the dream, like, was there a ship? And I was like, no, there wasn't a ship. So it could have been aliens overall. But I, mm -hmm. but I also remember um, days were also really tall. They were like seven feet tall. I remember, and I'm and it threw me off when. The guy with my angels, I remember him saying, because I was always expect the angels to be more human like. So that's pretty much why I kind of grew up being in the church and all, was angels well, are always I, more human like. I always ask uh, Yahweh to send his giant warrior angels when I'm uh, getting ready to go into battle. And the first thing I do before I go into someone's home is I say a land blessing out there. And as I'm doing the land blessing, I ask God to send his giant warrior angels to come and carry off any and every demon that may be present in on or around the land, the property, the home, or the family or their pets, and take them into custody and carry them off and deposit them back in the pits of hell where they belong. And I absolutely do believe that God sends his angels in that way. So uh, I believe your story, and it certainly sounds like uh, you had a divine angelic experience on that day. Ooh, that, that blows my mind away. It's like, whoo. <laughs> All we could say is praise God. And now it's time for you to realize how blessed and favored you are. And I pray that your life is very good and very blessed at this time. But I say, uh, let's take the next step forward and let's get busy uh, not only living, but winning. And the way that we win is to allow God to work through us in that mighty way to take us to the next level in the new chapter, in the new season. However, he will do that. Uh, we totally are committed to him, and we totally trust in him that he will guide us on the right path, in the right way, for his glory, 
So he will have us to be where he wants us and needs us to be, and that will be exactly where we want and need to be. Hmm. All right. Well, one more thing I want to discuss before I hop before y'all kick me off of here is um, <laughs> one. I looked up. I looked up at that Matthew six when you were talking about in Earth. Now yeah. I'm used to reading the NIV Bible, so I looked that up first. The NIV Bible mentions on Earth, but yet I decided to look up the KJV yeah. one as well, and then that one says in Earth. Exactly and right, I'm, and that shows you right there. Uh, we don't live in Earth. And it, so I have in my home, I have a, uh, in a frame, and it's on paper, the Lord's Prayer. And not far from that, on top of a bookcase, I have the Lord's Prayer that's uh, etched into a stone. And so I got up one day, and the Lord's Prayer was changed in the frame. So the way I say now to where it says in earth and, you know, our father, which art in heaven and, and all that and trespass and trespasses have been changed to debts and debtors. But yet the Lord's prayer in the stone was not altered at all. So I now, have pictures of that. And so that's it. It's proof that, however, this CERN device and these D-Wave quantum computers are doing this. They are working in concert, in conjunction with one another. I, and nor does any other human, I, I wouldn't think, would have the answers to exactly how this is working, unless these humans are literally right there, and I believe that they are working with fallen angels. This is fallen angel technology, and they are literally able to supernaturally whether that's through frequency, vibration, sending uh, light orbs, what some sort of energy, you know, through, a, a, through an orb or something that would come into a person's home or private space and be able to alter and manipulate these scriptures. Again, I have a 157-year-old Bible that has been changed, a 20-year-old Bible that has been changed in my possession, in my home, on my person. These things have been changed. I don't have an explanation for that other than to say that it's true, it's real. The scriptures did not read that way prior to this. And so this is something that is so far beyond my understanding that it took me a couple of weeks to really grasp this as to how this could be possible. Okay. So my one thing is um with the words changing. Does that mean, is, is the prayer still technically the same, or does it completely go 180 when it comes to the KJV and the NIV Bibles on that Lord's Prayer? Well, they're going to change them all, and they're working on it now. And so what they want to do is, I think this is a test, just to see if there are people awake that will catch this, because some of these words are just preposterous. I mean, you know, you're talking about words like... Uh, ranges and ovens and frying pans and highways and all this kind of stuff, mufflers and tires. These words are actually in the Bible now. And, and so this is ridiculous, but I really think this is a test to see how asleep the masses are. And I'll tell you, I have contacted these so-called big shots, um, you know, in the, the churches and, um, you know, uh, and Derek is aware of uh, what the 700 Club did to me several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole other topic. But, you know, I've contacted these types of people. It's Supernatural with Sid Roth and all these different, and they don't want to hear it. They don't, they just don't even want to go there. Now, I have contacted some uh, priests and pastors, and some of the people say, no, I'm not even going to look at that. You're an agent of the devil for saying that and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, they won't even go there, but yet some have. And I'm thankful that a few yeah. have, and they've had me come to their church mm. and speak to the congregations. And you should have heard the gas yeah. in, the, in the audience when I'm saying what I'm saying here about these changes. And they look in their own Bible and see it, and they're just like gasping. Hmm. So does that make the NIV Bible de de demonic then, or what, or what does that mean in the long run? 
Now I didn't hear what you said there. He wanted to. Know, he wanted to Sorry. know. Does that make the NIV Bible demonic now? Well, no. What this is designed to do, this is designed to corrupt them all. Yeah, and take, so, take full. Once they're corrupted, then people are going to say, you know, as a matter of fact, I had a debate with a man about a month ago. And this man is a brilliant man. He's a Bible scholar, pastor, uh, credentials, the length of your arm. Good man. Um, he's since become a friend. and um, But he was really opposed to what I was saying until he realized it for himself. And now he's on the same page with me and understands what the enemy is doing here. Uh, but we actually were on a show and had a debate. And, uh, you know, after that, I praise God for opening his eyes to see that the enemy is really doing something here. And this is designed because he said it himself in the debate. He said, well, if I don't have my Bible, I don't have anything. And I said, wait a minute, hold on. That is not <laughs> true. If you took every Bible off yeah. the face of this earth here and now, that does not affect in any way, shape, or form, my covenant or my relationship with God. So, uh, yes, the Bible is a great writing. It's the most popular book in the history of mankind, and it is inspired. However, it is not, and I repeat, it is not the infallible Word of God because men have corrupted it from the very beginning. Yeah. That's a whole other show as well. Oh, yeah. However, um, that said, if these Bibles were taken right now, it would not affect one bit my relationship with God. So I stressed that to him, and he understood what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm stressing that to all who are listening right now. Just because the Bible, uh, and people say, well, the Word of God is forever, it can't be changed. God's Word, God's spoken Word, is forever and does not change unless He changes it. However, we're talking about a book that men have access to, yep. and they certainly have added to and taken from, and they will continue to do so. Now we have these other forces at work in the demonic realms, uh, engineered and orchestrated by the enemy himself to do these things with making these alterations, and it is for a purpose and agenda. So it is very important for people to be aware of this. People need to be awake, and I mean like right now awake, because it is super important. I can't state it enough. It is super important for people to come back to God now and reestablish their uh, everlasting covenant with Him. And when we do this, you will have blessed assurance in knowing that God will make a way for you. And these things that are coming will not affect those that are in this great and strong faith with God. I'm telling you right now, I believe this with all of my heart. That's one thing that when it comes to Bill Bean that stood out from uh, to me from day one is that when, whenever I first heard Bill Bean was on Coast to Coast AM and I would just consume hours and hours and hours of it when I was on my truck driving job. And I was listening one particular morning. And listening to Bill Bean on as a guest, they had the exorcist on talking about demon possession and things like this. And this was the first time and maybe only time <laughs> that I've ever heard anybody go on coast to coast radio and preach the gospel, telling people how to stop these demonic encounters and uh, demonic possessions and, and, and people being tormented and haunted in the middle of the night. Bill Bean went on this national syndicated show and continues to go on there and goes on other shows and preaches the, the uncompromised gospel in, in a time where there wasn't many people doing that, especially when it was in some type of secular arena. So, and I always mention that every time Bill comes on, that was like the first time I, I, I was came into contact with his work. He was preaching the uncompromised gospel on coast to coast, man. And I thank you, brother, and it's true, and I praise God for it. And I can't be any different no matter where I go. And, I, you know, I've been in so many different types of settings, and uh, I've been in places to where there were all non-believers. I've been in places to where um, I was giving a lecture at one place in particular. I was giving a lecture at a paranormal event, and I was speaking about God, just like we're talking now. And some people got up and walked out. Yeah. They said, we didn't come here to 
uh, hear about God. We came here to hear about the, you know, the scary story and all that. We don't want to hear about God. And they got up and walked out. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I can't be any other way. This is the way that God has made me to be. This is the calling that God has put on my life. I will never change. Never for one second, because I am quite happy and thankful to God for uh, anointing me and calling me in this way. So as long as I have a breath in my body, I will be speaking the same way, no matter where I go, no matter who I'm talking to. Amen. And that right there, man, that is what many people are looking for. Authenticity. Many people out there, they don't know who to be. They're just like a chameleon around different people. They, they change with the wind. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they are not comfortable in their own skin they don't know how to be themselves because in in and it has a lot to do with my friends in the church arena they can't be who god called them to be or to like different things outside of the box or whatever the case is because they're demonized or so i'll have people who can't be affiliated with me uh, just because I, we talk about aliens, you know, and, and stuff like that. Yep. So they can't be seen around me. They can't yep. talk because their church friends would disown them and look at them, you know, and not okay. invite them in their circles and stuff. And so for somebody to be authentic in what they believe and who they are, man, money cannot buy that. I totally agree with you. And see, this is uh, another part of the agenda in our world today. Uh, our country and really the world as well is made up of mostly followers. So what they do, um, they assemble the best and the brightest and they get these people uh, coming out of college and they put them into think tanks like the Brookings Institute, places right. like that. So where they say, okay, let's tap in to the masses and how do we manipulate them? How do we introduce these fads and trends? This is all gauging on how to control people. So most of TV, that's why it's called TV programming, it is mind programming. So the things that you hear in a lot of today's music and TV shows and movies and things of this nature, this is all mass mind programming. It is designed to dumb people down, to make them subservient, and to make them a follower. So when you got everybody following along, it's very easy to control people, the masses. Yeah. Yep. And it's easy to go with the flow. And to, but I'm telling you, that's what, I mean, it's so easy to do that. But I've been in churches years ago when I was just, you know, going to the youth groups. And I used to do gospel rap music, right? And I do a lot of churches mm -hmm. and stuff. So, but there was deeper truths that the Lord would, was waking us up to, whether it was the Illuminati or the government or the prosperity pimps in the in the churches. That was a, that was like my awakening. That yeah. was early on for me. And so I would I would mention this stuff from the stage, and I would get these these weird looks from the pastors and the leaders. But some of the the uh, the members and some of the youth, their eyes would open up really wide and they were really into it. And they finally heard somebody vocalizing what they already believed on the inside. So for you to stand up and just voice the truth about a mat, uh, about a, mat a matter, it can lead people out of darkness and into the light and to really shine I totally um, agree. light on that. And I've been, I've just been like a poster child. I was, you know, I, I, I pretty much, you know, had my head cut off for doing that, but I did it and it's part of the process. And I know the power of speaking the truth, even if your voice trembles and even if nobody else is speaking the truth around you to open up your mouth and, and declare the oracles of God, no matter what opposition you have out there. And, and the people who, who it's, it's it, supposed to resonate with, it's going to resonate with whoever it's for. They're going to get it. People listening right now, if it's for you, you get it. If not, and that's why I was telling somebody, there's a million freaking videos on your sidebar right now. You can click any one of those videos mm -hmm. and leave and go and be taking out other rabbit trails and listen to other people. But if you're listening to this for yeah. this long, something's, something's got to be going on in your spirit. Something has, you have to be resonating with something. There's a million different places totally for you to agree, go and, and for you to be. So we don't have to convince anybody. We don't have to trick anybody to follow us or to believe our gospel or, or you know, no. to, to believe our good news. If, it's, if the Lord's dealing with you, it's, it's between you and him. And, and we may be a totally you know, vehicle for that. And that, that's how you got to know your calling, Bill. 
It's no, it, you don't have to trick anybody. You don't have to, you don't have to pull any strings. Exactly. You just be a child of God. You be a manifestation of the sons and daughters of God on the earth and watch what happens. Things begin to open up. Doors are open. You have power and authority to walk in. It becomes a lot more fun. And then we're not broke, busted and disgusted and, and just, you know, living to get by. Life becomes worth living. It becomes a lot more fun as well. I totally agree with you, brother. And see, this is where, and look, I know there's a lot of great churches still out there, and God bless them. However, I have to say this, because if I didn't say it, then I'd be doing a disservice. Um, A lot of today's churches are sold out. And that goes for, you know, look, uh, some some of our people in the high places, whether that's government or entertainment Mm -hmm. or athletes, whatever it may be, they're all selling out. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's absolutely the truth. And so this is why it is so important with the foundations of everything uh, kind of coming apart. It is very important for men like us to stand tall and to stand strong in that warrior mode and say, look, no matter what happens here, we are going to continue to be strong and God is going to continue to strengthen us and we're going to be a voice and we can't force anybody to do anything, nor do we want to force anybody to do anything. But if you look into some of today's churches, that's exactly what they do, because they will say, if you don't believe like I believe, you're yeah. damned to hell. Yeah. If you don't do this, 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 and this, you are damned to hell. If you do this and this and this, you are damned to hell. So what happens is these people start ruling by fear, and once they have the, the congregation, those who are listening to their message, um, under that type of fear, then they are going to control them, and they're going to be able to dominate them and manipulate them into things that people would never imagine that they could be manipulated into doing. And this is where some of the churches cross into that cult-like type of thing, oh, yeah. to where now this pastor is being worshipped, and and the pastor is now doing all these crazy things, and the people are just totally afraid, and they become subservient, and so they are just literally under the rule and under the thumb of this individual that's supposed to be a man of God. Yeah, and then when the pastor falls away from God, or the pastor gets caught up in some type of uh, extra marital affair, and and the pastor falls yeah. into sin, and then they quit believing in God because of something the pastor did. Exactly and it right. shows you that their trust wasn't in Christ, but their trust was in this this leader or this follower, which was their pastor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, we cannot do that. Our trust must always be with God because yeah. we as human beings, we're all fallible. There's not one of us that are perfect. And I would be the first one to say, I try to do the best that I can do and be the best that I can be each and every day of my life. But I fall short, too. I'm a human being. So we're all in this cesspool world, and we're going to make bad choices from time to time. So nobody is exempt from making a mistake. Now, when I do something that I know is not pleasing to God, I get on my knees and I ask him to forgive it. So I confess it before Mm -hmm. him. And I ask him to forgive it, and then a blessing always follows that, because God delights when we come back to him in that type of childlike um, reverence for him in asking him to please, you know, we confess it before him. He already knows, but we confess it before him, and, and he delights in that when we have humbled ourselves and come back and literally gotten on our knees and asking for that forgiveness, and a blessing always follows. Mm-hmm. Bill, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. As always, it's a pleasure. I'm glad we we got to do it again. It's been too long, brother. It's my honor and pleasure. And please, let's schedule another show very, very soon. I've enjoyed this. Um, And God bless you and your family, Brother Derek. And God bless everybody out there that's listening in. And may God keep everybody in his hedge protection 24-7. And may God bless all of you with an abundance of love, peace, joy, good health, and prosperity for life. Father, we give you the praise and the thanks and the glory forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Appreciate you, brother. All Thank right, you so my much. brother. I'll be in touch. All right, God brother. bless you. Shalom. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Bill Bean, ladies and gentlemen, we've done, um, I think we've done three shows total in the past. And one of the last ones, like he said, was about him was supposed to go on um, 
I think it was CBN. He was supposed to do. They they, they came out and shot a segment. They shot a story um, about his testimony about him dealing with uh, demons and the dark forces and stuff. And th- there's a lot of stuff that Bill's in, in, um, actually involved with, where they use his story on television and stuff like that. But the Christian people wanted to come out and do it. So they came out and they shot the film with, with um, the 700 club for CBN. I believe it was, I believe I got that right. And they came out and filmed it and they gave him a date that it was going to air. And he was looking forward to it. It's going to be great publicity. A lot, you know, a lot of people would be able to hear his story and uh, you know, Bill would, would, would his, his name and renown would get out there. They gave him a date. The date came and went It didn't air. And so he e- emails them. They give him another date the date came and went the the segment never aired well come to find out um some people wrote in to uh when when they heard that he was going to be on the show and told them a little bit about bill's fascination with ufos and so bill had a and i think he still has it but you can go to his website um it's billbean.com i'll put it in the in the description but uh, he has pictures where he was just prompted to take pictures of the sky just in a certain area and you couldn't see anything. But when he got the film developed, these UFO ships and orbs were appearing, not the, the little, you know, orbs that people show up in the camera with the lights, but these metallic looking ships in like in the middle of the day. And he had a bunch of these pictures of, of these different, um, I don't know if they were actual ships or they were beings because we know that they're beings of light that are out there as well. So he had a bunch of this stuff on his website, really awesome work. And I thought, it, I thought it was really cool, but they called in or they wrote in and told him about him and, uh, they canceled his segment. They did. They, they, they chose not to air it because of his fascination with UFOs. And, um, and that, that sucks, man. I, I, you know, that sucks for him. And I think there was a period of time where he, he quit talking about the UFOs and stuff a little bit, too, because that happened. So, um, you know, <laughs> I'm reading the comments. <laughs> What's up, Maddie, brother? Uh, so, so Maddie's saying complete 180 from last week's podcast, LOL. And somebody else says he is the real deal. Yeah, it is. It is a 180. And um this is what you get, man. We we have a lot of different people on here with a lot of different opinions and voices, and I try to get mine in there a little bit here and there, here 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 the here a little there a little, as the scriptures say. And um, but yeah, man, we talk to everybody on this show, man, and people give me hell about it. Like when I have Jordan Maxwell on or something, and they're like, you know, they they get upset because he speaks as an authority figure on some things that or even false, right? And and we, we know, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be like, I'm talking crap about Jordan because I really do love the guy and I, and I feel like I'm going to be used to speak life and speak truth into that man. And I have a relationship with him, even though we don't agree on things, you know? Um, I'm doing what I'm doing because of Jordan Maxwell. It's been such an influence. But, but you know what? People are saying this, that, you know, Jordan is this, Jordan is that. He has an agenda, whatever the case is. And I'll say this. Jordan's time is is come and gone. He's on his last leg. It's our turn. It's our turn. You men and women out there who have a call of God on your life and you have breath in your lungs and you have the truth and you have a fire in your stomach to get that truth out, out there, it's your turn. It's your turn to do that. And be encouraged, be uh, equipped to do it. And don't be scared of anything. Speak the truth, even if your voice shakes. No matter what it is, it's your turn. Even prophetically, I release that over you. It's your turn to do it. Stop watching videos. Stop doing the research. Stop debating. It's time just to get out there and what the scripture says to do the work of the evangelist. Get out there and do it. That's the whole difference with what we're, what we're, we're doing now versus what was going on back in the church days. In the church days, we would just have Bible studies and we would just debate about the words that Jesus said or the b- debate about what Paul said. Well, what did he really mean? What did he really mean when he said, and we'd have these debates for hours and we go back and study and we come back and we debate and stuff, but we, it's simple. Go out and freaking do what Jesus said, do don't debate about what he said and try to find the references and stuff. I've been there and I've done that and I can do it. And that was for a season, but just get out there and simply do what Jesus did. Go out there and love the unlovable. 
go out there and show grace to those who don't deserve grace. Show mercy to those who don't deserve mercy. And do that and watch things begin to open up. Watch God begin to bless that. Watch God begin to breathe upon that. God, he'll give you the resources. He'll open up the doors that no man can open. He'll close doors that no man can close. It is simple, man. We try to make it so hard and try to, I don't even, it's so crazy. I've been talking to a lot of people lately about the, the church realm and how they just divide and try to divide the followers. Like there's all these followers and we have all these people and these different ministers and even in the fringe circles, like where we, we dwell. I, and I'll say it again. I've been saying like a, like a broken record, but I'm going to keep saying it just in case you didn't hear the last episode. There's people who are trying to get followers and they demonize the other people so that they can get their followers, even in the church realms, whether it's for donations or for money or things like that. They look at different people like myself and you can look at me and, and, and find all types of flaws, <laughs> whatever you want. Illuminati tattoos, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the way I talk. Um, may seem less educated, whatever the case is, you can find all of these things wrong with me so that you can promote the work of somebody else or say, yeah, check out our, our new teachings on this and present it with a suit on and speak as an authority figure or whatever the case is. But these people are doing that to get followers for themselves. And I don't want to do that to other ministers or just people. I don't give a damn if you're a minister or not. Uh, do it to other people so that you can you put other people down so that it makes you look better. And that's just even the spirit behind it when people are gossiping. And it ain't got to have nothing to do with religion or spirituality. Just gossiping, talking about other people. You know, and I tell you what, when it comes to Jesus, Jesus uh, spoke about hell a few times and he condemned a few practices. And one of the practices that Jesus said was worthy of hellfire was backbiting and talking about people, and opening your mouth about people. Why? Because he understood the power of vibration. He understood the power of the spoken word, that life and death is in the power of the tongue, and you create as you speak in the same breath that breathes us into existence. It dwells within our lungs, and we have that same power within our voice. He understood that. He didn't play with all this backbiting and gossiping and stuff that goes on in the religious arena and even outside of it. Uh, it it's, it's all about truth. So instead of looking at people and seeing what, what I don't agree with and what I don't believe in and pointing those things out or whatever, even though there's a time for that, don't get me wrong. I would rather look at you or look at a, a person and, and find that what we can agree on and build on that versus in the church realm. They teach you to find what you disagree on. We could, man, there's people, I've lost really good friends, man, or people I thought were friends uh, because we agree on so much and uh, have so much in common, whether it was music and, and stuff like that. And then they want to know my beliefs on every, they like quiz me. They like drill you on all these subjects when it comes to religion and belief system or whatever until they find something that they hold as a core belief and you have a slightly different opinion and then they'll use that. Oh, okay, we can't work together anymore. We can't kick it. And and they tell people to stay away from you and demonize. It's so crazy, man. It is so crazy. And I, so I enjoy having people on with other opinions, with other belief systems. And I, I have a belief system too. And I, I let these people speak. And I try to straighten it up a little bit at the end. But I do understand why I'm here. And I know what I'm doing. And so I just want to empower you guys to know why you're here. Why are you here? What is your call? Find it and do it, man. Uh, and I tell you, like, there's su there is such liberation in being who you're called to be. First of all, find out what that is. Some, I know many people don't know that, you know, what, what they are and, and why they're here. F find that reason and then do it and then walk in it and then thrive in it. And, and things will start lining up and people will envy you, man. People who are chameleons, people who are just, they don't know, they they just pushed around by every different belief system or every different persona and personality in spirits, right? And so just be who you're created to be, love yourself, know that the message of God or the message of Jesus is, is, is universal love, love for all people who don't deserve it. 
And that's simply why I'm here doing this show tonight. That's the grace that empowers me to pursue my dreams, the grace that empowers me to be a good husband, a good father, a good friend. It is grace that has been shed upon my life, and I take that same grace and extend it to others, even Jordan Maxwell. Even Jordan Maxwell. Many of my friends, look, I'm telling you, they want me <laughs> They want me to tear him a new one. They want me to get him on here and debate him and tell him off on camera and stuff like that. And we, we disagree on stuff. You know, it's part of it, you know, but uh, th there's grace for Jordan Maxwell. Jesus loves Jordan Maxwell. And uh, so, yeah, reach out to him, man. You know, everybody wants me to do it. You guys can you guys could do the work too. do the work of the evangelist. Do what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm going to say shalom. I enjoyed hanging out with, with all of you guys. I'm reading all the, the messages in the, in the um, comment section. And thank you guys so much. Davey, Paranormal, Intermission, Chris Garner. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Hunter, thanks for calling in, listening, brother. Maddie, Maddie says, got to use the sermon and balance and everything. No doubt, man. We present the work and, uh, it's a, it's up to, it's up to you, man. That's just part of it. There's gonna and it's hard for me to it it is even hard for me to promote people to say because people are like okay I have I get messages and people they want to know who I'm into what I listen to and they get my opinion my opinions on people and with an open heart I try to I try to share what what, what works for me and and what's helped me but for the most part like it's hard for me to say okay listen to this person's work. Because I know there's a bunch of stuff in there that is dangerous. So I'm not going to promote them. You know what I'm saying? And, and that, that happens a lot of times. Uh, people message me all the time. And uh, But that, I guess that kind of placates right to everything I was saying though, right? You know, you know people trying to get fo followers. But, um, you know, I, I don't know, man. It's just whatever you listen to, whatever minister or whatever conspiracy theorist, spiritualist, whoever they are, mystic, um, I think that everybody has something for us. I think that everybody has a piece of the puzzle. And what I used to say at the beginning of every show when I described my podcast years ago is that we're just taking our piece of the puzzle and we're putting it, get, putting it up to see if it, it fits, see if we can make a picture out of it. Take some pieces I have, the callers, the guests, Throw it all up and see if we can make something fit. See if we can make a picture out of all of our pieces. And that's still the goal to this day. And so I enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking to you guys and, and spreading the message. So thank you guys so much for, for staying on, hanging out with me. Uh, if you listen to this on YouTube or any other um, platform, that's video. Make sure you guys go subscribe to the audio version as well on iTunes. So we are on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. Everywhere that podcasts are, that's where we are. And it's awesome that we just got all these places uh, actually opening up now so we can get into some places that are hard for podcasts to get into. There's not a lot of podcasts on iHeartRadio and on Spotify, but we're there. So that's part of that favor. So a lot of people who are able to hear the show and, and who have would have never heard it on YouTube. And so we're kind of permeating every place that we can. So be sure to follow us on iTunes, subscribe there, rate the podcast, and uh, it'll help push us up the rankings and all that good stuff. And if there was something valuable in this episode, some truth, something that resonated with you, be sure to share the episode out with somebody uh, on social media. Because, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff helps, man. Put it out there in front of their eyes, in front of their consciousness. There was something in the show that they needed to hear. If you feel that way, make sure you hit that, that share button. And also for those of you who are wanting to support what I do, because uh, we're doing this full time now, you can go to Patreon and fund me there. Patreon.com backslash truth seeker. And the, the link is in the description. I've made it easy for you to click on. Anybody who wants to give there, first of all, huge shout out to everybody who has been giving. You guys are freaking awesome helping me do this, helping me to do what I love. But at any level of giving, from a dollar all the way to 10, 15, 25, 100 dollars, whatever you want to give. We have people giving at every level there. And it helps so much to go back and fund what I'm doing. But with that being said, you get unreleased music. There's a bunch of music there. I mean, for all of you guys who have no idea that I even do music, I'm a hip hop artist. And um, many of the stuff, the things that we're talking about tonight, I put in my music. We have a song on there right now that's only on Patreon and it hasn't been released to the general public yet, but you can access it through Patreon. 
we have a song about spirits and elementals and these different beings that dwell on these other planes of existence that are over um, the earth, air, fire, water elementals and, and how they operate and what they do. And it's crazy. This stuff's in the Bible. Elementals are in the Bible. These different spirits were mentioned of. And I love this stuff, man. So I take it all and I put it all in my music. We talk about the planetary alignments. We talk about the stars of Orion be leading and guiding. They cover me down to the top of Mount Zion. We talk about UFOs. We talk about all this stuff. I put it in my music and share it. So you guys can get my music on Patreon. You can get it on iTunes and everywhere else where you consume music and check it out. So if you enjoy the podcast, please check out the music as well. Huge thank you to everybody. So with that being said, I'm going to say shalom, and we're going to catch you guys again very soon. Peace, peace.